The difference between FISMA and FedRAMP. This is a question that many people ask. In fact, it is a confusion point for a lot of people. So let's start at the core element. Illustrated here behind me are kind of the, the hub or the foundation by which FISMA, uh, FedRAMP, DICAP, all of these type of security requirements kind of spawn from. And that's NIST 800-53. So illustrated, you see the NIST 800-53 sitting up there and that holds those controls, security controls. And remember, a security control is defined as a control that goes from, for example, how do I delete a hard drive, excuse me, how do I remove a hard drive from a server um, when it goes out? What's the process by which I dispose of that hard drive so that sensitive data doesn't leak? What do I do in case of an uh, incident? Uh, how do I respond to that incident? Or all the way down to how do I do basic configuration management tasks? All of these things are covered within this NIST 800-53. And so from that, the ATOs, or the authority to operate, is, is driven. Now agencies will add, and organizations will add their own security requirements that are up and above the NIST 800-53. But that's the core by which FedRAMP and FISMA are coming from. But there is another difference that we need to be aware of, and that is FISMA is a customer-driven activity where FedRAMP can be done by a company. So in a FedRAMP environment, you can add your workloads and not have to go through the ATO process. So I know that's a lot of information. So just summary. NIST 800-53 are where the control sets are, and that's illustrated here at the top. And then you have FISMA, DICAP, HIPAA, SOC, all types of other ATOs and certificates that come from those control sets as well as FedRAMP.